Okay, I want to take a look at this uh, telescope from Astrophysics, one of their uh, latest scopes they came out with a couple years ago. It's the 92 millimeter F6.65 stowaway with a 2.5 inch focuser. Now it comes with this really nice Pelican air case. It's the number 1525. And it has this really nice divider system that allows you to customize it. By the way, the case is made in, in the United States. And um, I have this set up uh, in my particular case here for just what I want to keep in here. And um, so it turned out really nice, this divider set is well made and um, I had never used it before so I was not familiar with how it would work out but really happy with it I may end up buying me some other cases just like this for other purposes so what I've done here is I've got it divided off with the main scope and a permanent spot for a handle that I did I did a YouTube video on this on my channel to uh, carry the scope and over here, I've got this the dust cap, the two inch, and I can put some other dust caps in there. Uh, the, you know, the uh, two inch, the inch and a quarter adapter, and such. So I got on the list the very first day that it came out. And you know, I never did make note of it, but it was the first day that it came out. Signed up for the wait list. And I received this April 1st, which was a Wednesday of 2020. I paid $3,590, and that included uh, any shipping and insurance. Everything was included at that price. The serial number of the unit that I received is 92665-3-320. So the item code is a 92F665. The lens is 92 millimeters in diameter which is the equivalent of 3.62 inches and the objective lens is an air spaced three element design the focal ratio is f 6.65 giving the focal length of 612 millimeters or 24.1 inches the weight of the telescope as it comes from astrophysics is 7.1 pounds and the reason I put it that way is because I'm sure with what I've added to mine it's going to weigh a little bit more. The uh, telescope folded retracted length is 19 and a half inches long or 495 millimeters and the dew shield diameter is 4.4 inches or 112 millimeters outside diameter. Now very briefly, <clears throat> just a couple things that I did. Uh, it did come with these custom made from Astrophysics knobs on all four sides of the rings to tighten it down. And I did a YouTube video, so I'm not going to go over any of that. But I, I changed it to just those so if you want to look at that you can check it out but that's why this doesn't look like you'll see on their website another thing I did is as uh, shipped and supplied by astrophysics this dovetail bar which is an SBV08 came on the bottom so I put it to the top as you see here and then I bought a dove DV10 on the bottom so this is a 10 inch saddle plate and this works with both D style and V style bars
and this is the one that George recommended that I buy and I'm glad he did you see it's cut out there so it misses the uh, dew shield The other item that I've added to this is the item that you see right here, and that is the QRBASEG, and that is the uh, quick release guider bracket for the 10x60 finder uh, by Batter. This also serves a dual purpose because this is what I use to put my handle that I use to carry this telescope. Now on the focuser end, you'll see this bracket, the smaller one, it is a QRBASEM, and it's the base for the quick release finder brackets. While we're at the focusing end, this is a 2.5 inch Feather Touch Focuser by Starlight Instruments, and it is a dual speed type. So the dual speed, or if you turn the gold knob, it's slower. And it is graduated. This is a fully rotatable focuser. It's got three of these knobs. You just turn that and you can rotate this 360 degrees. And if you're curious to see what that looks like, got like a Teflon or nylon end that would abut to the uh, focuser so it doesn't scratch and gouge. As you can see here, you can put that base, that QRBASEM, either the right or the left side. They have holes provided for either side. Now, if you want to increase or decrease the drag on this focuser, you'll need a 3 16 Allen wrench, and you can either turn this clockwise to put a little more drag on it, or counterclockwise to take some off. Okay, I want to direct your attention to this set screw. That did not come supplied with the uh, telescope that way. I ended up changing it. So the very first night out, I was getting a little bit confused when I would be uh, taking the adapter off changing eyepieces from two to two inch and a quarter and back and forth even though the supply this is the supplied uh, knurled I don't know what you'd call it thumb screw type thing it's knurled uh, as is this even though the diameter is bigger as you can see here the diameter is bigger that goes on here uh, it was just too close and I found myself having to think a little too much maybe that's my problem but in any event so I thought I needed to change that so <clears throat> even before I actually looked at the whole uh, manual slash directions that come with this which I really didn't look at uh, I was looking through it at another date and I came upon uh, on page 6 page 6 it talks about thumb screw replacement for visual only observers and this is optional 
and it says down here the set screw replacements can be obtained by calling Astrophysics or through suppliers such as McMaster Car. The set screws are 1032 by half inch long stainless steel with 90 degree cone tips. Now that's the important part. So here's what I did guys. Um, you see the knurled thumb screw as provided by Astrophysics. To the left of that is a three quarter inch long 1032. Now here's what I did. I ordered some half inch, some three quarter as you see here, and some one inch because I had, I had an idea and I wanted to make sure that when I ordered them I had them all at the same time. So here you see those 90 degree cone tips that states that you have to have so you don't do damage to the um, adapter and so in my particular case the three quarter inch long is what I de decided that I was going to replace the stock knurled thumb screw with note that these set screws are a very specific matched to the thumb screws and the dovetail of the dove lock the angle of the cone tip is critical or you will scar the finish of your dove lock so this was my thinking even though I ordered the half inch I didn't even try those first I tried the three quarter that you see in here then I went with the one inch and the three quarter is the size that I deemed would work best for me now these 1032 set screws will require a 3 30 seconds allen wrench and I've got this bondus ball end in this nice grip design that you see here and um, what I'm going to do is probably cut it off I've done this before when I custom make these for whatever application I'm using them for I've actually um, cut them off wherever I want because I really don't need the ball end and I want it a little bit shorter so I'm going to cut this off grind it flat and then just put a little wire wheel on it and that'll work perfect but so now instead of having the neural end I'm going to have the 330 seconds driver that you see here I am pretty much strictly visual even though I did order um, the matching uh, field flattener and telecompressor uh, for down the road even if I do photographic my thought is I'm going to keep it just like it is because by using this you won't have the convenience of just turning a knurled knob so quick but I'm going to have the convenience of not turning something wrong in the dark so I'd rather have that personally and it would just be a matter of these stick out so what I like about that is is I can just run my hand across here I can feel that this will go right in here like that and I would just loosen them up rotate this if I needed to or just to take it off instead if I didn't want to use the um, rotation feature of these uh, uh, focuser whatever I wanted to do this tool will do it and I have the uh, convenience of not turning the wrong thing at night. All right, I've already pre-loosened two of them. Let me loosen this up, and I'll show you what the dove lock system is if you're not familiar with it. Okay, which is this section right in here, this groove. That's what they're calling their dove lock. And that's why you want the 90 degree tip so that it works proper with that system. So what that does is that tip, I don't know if I can show it right here, but it'll just come up against let me go up here I don't know if I can show that right it'll just come up against here and push that forward and hold that in place now when I put this in the case 
I rotate this like you see here so that the um, on the dew shield the uh, 92 millimeter stowaway sticker doesn't rub the sides as I'm putting it in but it's got a little thumb screw here stainless steel Okay, boys and girls, let's take a look at the business end of this telescope. When I did my unpacking video of this 92, one of the guys noticed, made a comment on the video that this lens cap looked deeper than the one that he received. So I thought I would do a video here with these depth mics. These are a pair of Sterrets I have that are a flat blade and they're non-rotating. I've got some other Sterrets and Mitsutoyas that rotate, but I'm going to try this here, and I've checked it on my, uh, I've calibrated it on my um, granite plate, so it's reading properly, so let's see what I'm getting. The only thing about these, it doesn't have a locking collar. I should have turned it around the other way. Oh well, we'll get it. It's right there. Okay, I'm getting 0.579 as the inside depth of that dust cap. just to show you what I mean by non-rotating as I turn it first off it's a blade so you can get down into grooves and stuff you can get into thinner walls but as I rotate this as I turn the spindle watch that blade does not rotate it stays straight so that's the important part I just thought I'd point that out so if you were checking the depth of something that had a narrow wall, you could do it with this. Okay, with this 92 millimeter, I thought I would try various eyepieces and see whether or not I needed an extension tube if I was using the Teleview 2 inch diagonal or if I was using it straight through or if I was using the William Optics 45 degree erecting prism. Now if I was using an extension tube I would either mention the Astrophysics short one or the long extension tube. Now what do I mean when I say short and long? This is the Astrophysics ex extension tube. It's the short one. It's going to be one and three quarter inches. 
and that distance is from where the eyepiece rests when you put it into the extension tube to the shoulder here that goes into the draw tube of the telescope. So that would be the short one, one and three quarter length extension. And the long one is going to be three and five eighths of an inch with the same parameters. Where the eyepiece rests here when it goes into the extension tube. And then the shoulder that sets into the draw tube of the eyepiece focuser. So these are the eyepieces that I'm choosing. The, um, they're all Televues. The 55 millimeter Plasso, 31 Nagler, 18.2 Delight, 18 Radian, 17.3 Delos, the 3.5 Delos, the 3 Delight, and the 3 millimeter Radian. Okay, we're going to start out with the uh, diagonal. That's the uh, two inch Teleview diagonal. And they all reached focus. The 55 millimeter just made it. In fact, you probably could have just pulled it out a hair uh, from, from the um, diagonal, but uh, they all did reach focus. Okay, if we're going straight through, they all needed the long tube. So that long tube, which was three and five eighths, was the one that was required for all of them. Uh, the 55 Plasso actually had to pull it out um, uh, uh, probably a good half an inch for it to reach focus. Okay, now if we were going to be using the William Optics um, erecting prism, which we see all the way over there to the right, right here, then I just tried the following eyepieces. And um, with the 55 Plasso, uh, you didn't need any extension tube. With the 31 millimeter Nagler, you did not need an extension tube. With the 18.2 Delight, you did not need an extension tube. With the 18 millimeter Radian, you did not need one. And with the 17.3, you also did not need an extension tube. Okay, so for terrestrial viewing, I really like this, the William Optics 45 degree erecting prism. And with this little scope, it's so portable that um, it, it makes it so much easier and enjoyable to use and set up. So again, I just thought I would do this for you guys. Uh, you can kind of get an idea as to how uh, that will operate with uh, the various configurations.